about here in a little bit, if you've got a cell problem, and all disease is cell disease, you're going to also have a hormone problem. So hormones come out of the brain, typically out of the master gland, which is your pituitary gland, sometimes out of the pineal gland. There's a, they're kind of connected, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, even though we talk about them separately. The pineal gland secretes melatonin and serotonin, and the pituitary gland secretes factors that turn on all the other glands. This is why it's called the master gland. Sometimes an area in the brain called the hypothalamus, you may have heard of that, is involved. From there, it goes to all the other glands of the body. From the pituitary and the hypothalamus, it goes to all the other glands in the body. There's seven main glands or glandular systems. There's actually a lot more glands. There's probably about 50 or so, but there's seven main ones. The adrenals, the reproductive glands, the pancreas, the thymus, the thyroid, the pituitary, and the pineal gland. And interestingly, these correspond almost exactly to what is called in Eastern medicine, the chakras. You probably heard that term. Chakra is Sanskrit for wheel. Ancient people, particularly in China and in India, envisioned these centers, these, these uh, chakra centers as circulating vortexes of energy, thus the name wheels. They didn't know what hormones were 5,000 years ago, but they knew what chakras were and they wrote about them. I don't know how that happened. It wasn't until the, the mid 19th century when Western scientists began to explore the nature of hormones and chemical messengers. But 5,000 years ago, they knew that there was something going on in these seven major centers, these seven chakra centers. And while technically there's many of these centers, as I say, there are seven major ones. The first chakra is associated with survival. That's why it's the first chakra. It's the most important in terms of survival. That's your adrenal glands. This is your fight or flight chakra. It keeps us alive in emergency conditions. The second is the reproductive glands. This is important for the survival of the species, not survival personally, but survival of us, of the human race, procreation. Your second chakra is your gonads, the uh, ovaries and the testes. The third chakra is the solar plexus. This is, the, this is our, our, our power chakra. This is where we get independence from, and, and according to, anyway, according to Eastern medicine, this is where we get a sense of self from, a sense of independence and power, and it's also linked to the digestive system. The pancreas is the gland that's associated with the third chakra. Fourth chakra corresponds to the thymus. The thymus is your immune gland. Immune cells are made out of the thymus, and from an Eastern perspective, Eastern medicine perspective, this is your heart chakra. It's associated with love and harmony and good relationships. How do you like that? The immune system th via the thymus and the heart are linked. How interesting is it that heart disease is the number one killer in the United States and around the world? We have a fourth chakra heart issue in this country, in this culture, and around the world. Via heart disease, you can see this. We have a fourth chakra disease problem. Oh, guess what? The fourth chakra is involved with love and harmony and peace and good relationships. Is it, any, is it any surprise that we've got heart chakra problems? The breasts, by the way, are also part of this, air, this heart area. And guess what? Breast cancer is the leading cause of, and lung cancer, which is also associated with this area, are the leading causes of death by cancer. How interesting is that? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're going to take a break and come back with more good health information. Don't go away. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about health. Prescription drugs, nutrition, nutritional supplements, formulations, skin health, longevity products, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We can help you change your life today. We can help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today by getting on a good nutritional supplement program and just understanding the basics of how the body works. So we're talking hormone health and the chakras. The first chakra is associated with survival. Your adrenal glands. Second is associated with the reproductive centers, reproductive glands, the ovaries, the testes. This is a, this, the second chakra is our survival of the species chakra as opposed to survival of the self chakra. The third is related to the solar plexus. This is our power center, the center of the body, the intestine really. The nervous system that's associated with the intestine is the is the solar plexus. It makes sense. You know, when I was playing basketball in high school, 
they would always tell us, always look at the center, oh, at the belly. Look at you, uh, you know, you can make all kinds of fake moves with your hips and your shoulders and your, and your, uh, uh, and your hands if you're dribbling a basketball, but the belly doesn't lie. The belly is the center of the body. It is the solar plexus via uh, the solar plexus center in terms of, in terms of uh, the nervous system, and it's the digestive system as well, and it's associated with power. It's your third chakra. The fourth chakra is your heart chakra. It's associated with the thymus and the immune system. I love how the heart is associated with the immune system. We always have immune problems. We've got heart problems. People who are depressed, have lowered immunity. And interestingly, lung cancer, breast cancer, heart disease, these are all fourth chakra problems. We got fourth chakra disease. We got love disease via this fourth chakra connection. The fifth chakra, that's super cool. That's your thyroid. If you, we, just like we have an epidemic of heart disease, we got an epidemic of thyroid issues. Hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism. Well, guess what? The thyroid is associated with creativity and expression. And just like we have love, uh, love disease, we got expression and creativity disease as well. The uh, fifth chakra is your, is your uh, thyroid center and your creativity chakra and expression chakra. Then you have your sixth and seventh chakras. I'm going to save those for tomorrow because those are super cool. And the third eye, the pituitary, and the pineal gland. Those are our light transducers. They take light and they turn it into electrical energy. Super cool. It's no accident that the pineal gland, uh, that the pine cone has been revered by secret societies and occultists for eons. The largest pine cone structure, pine cone sculpture in the world is located in the courtyard of the Vatican. No accident. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking hormone health as it relates to the skin on the bright side. Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Time to hit our phones. Let's get our first phone call of the day. Cheryl in New York, what's going on? Welcome to The Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. What's yes, good? I'm seeking ways to significantly increase my absorption of calcium. Okay. My understanding, um, based on my research and also experientially, is that calcium is one of the most difficult mineral, minerals to absorb. And when I um, have attempted to increase my intake and dosage of longevity calcium products, I experience loose stools. And I know that my body is in dire need of more calcium, and I okay. need help. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Calcium is, should be the easiest or one of the easiest minerals to absorb because there's so many systems in place to make sure that calcium gets absorbed because of its vital, vital, important nature. I don't want to say it's the most important of all the minerals, but you can make a case for that. I don't like picking on one mineral or one nutrient saying it's the most important, but you can certainly make a case that calcium is the most important. When we think of calcium, we think of the structure of the body. We tend to think of bones, right? Because it's kind yes. of intuitive that calcium is the bones. But you know what? Maybe 1% of the calcium in your body is in the bones. Mm -hmm. The rest of the calcium, I don't know if it's 1%, but it's a very small percentage of our calcium is in our bones. The vast majority of calcium is used to signal things. It's a signaling molecule. It's a messenger molecule. And we've been talking about hormones and the endocrine system. Well, calcium isn't exactly a hormone, but it has some of the same kinds of effects. It tells cells what to do. It turns cell. It doesn't tell them what to do. It turns them on. It initiates activity. It's a cell hormone, a cell um, uh, mineral, more than it is a bone and structural mineral. So there are many mechanisms in place. Vitamin D, for example, is involved in calcium absorption. Parathyroid hormone, which is a real interesting, the parathyroid is a super interesting gland that hardly ever gets any discussion, but parathyroid hormone also is involved in how calcium is absorbed. But the most important thing to recognize about calcium absorption, and this is why, as you say, it's, it has a reputation for being difficult to absorb, but even though it's really not, the, the main issue with calcium absorption involves fat. And this is true about many minerals, zinc, for example, selenium, for example. These require a healthy fat absorption system. And that means bile. And that means the intestine. And that means liver. So if you have a problem absorbing calcium, you probably have a liver, bile, intestine, or gallbladder issue. Are you with me so far? Yes, I am. There, there's a major connection, a major relationship between how the body processes fats and vitamin D 
the parathyroid, as well as the intestines and the liver and the gallbladder. And to compound things, the kidney is sometimes involved as well. So without having to work on all these different systems, what do you do to maximize your calcium absorption? Well, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, you know exactly what I'm going to tell you. Number one, you focus on the digestive system, especially as it regards fats. Anybody who's dealing with any kind of calcium issue, this is why periodically, by the way, they'll, you'll hear studies that come out and say, oh, calcium supplements are bad for your heart. Have you heard these? Or calcium supplement is dangerous. Or be careful yeah. with calcium. It's not the calcium. It's the processing of the calcium. So it's not calcium that's a problem. It's calcium that's not processed correctly because there's a liver issue or a digestive issue. So using your ultimate enzymes with all your meals, taking extra bile salts, can help. Bile salts are also in the ultimate enzymes, but taking extra bile salts can help. Lecithin granules, which is a component of bile, can also help. Doing anything you could do to protect your digestive system from food toxins or food allergens, that means doing an elimination diet, looking for problem foods. Are you with me so far, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay. All your fatty nutrients, and that includes the, the, uh, the fatty vitamins, D, E, A, and K are important. And K is especially important, by the way, for calcium. This is what, this is what calcium, uh, vitamin K's main role is, is to help the body, uh, is to help the calcium system of the body. And if you have an intestinal problem, you're going to have a vitamin K problem. So making sure you're supplementing with all those vitamins, D, E, A, and K. D, probably the best way to get it is the sun via this vitamin D connection, the sun is a major, major tool for helping you absorb calcium because that's how you get your vitamin D. That's the best way to get your vitamin D. You can also use, of course, vitamin D supplements, and you can also use vitamin D-containing foods, particularly eggs and dairy and organ meats, but vitamin D from the sun is the best vitamin D. Essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, are going to be important for helping you process calcium as well. And then making sure you have enough magnesium. Magnesium and calcium work together. Sometimes magnesium causes loose stools, by the way. Uh, calcium tends to be a little bit constipating if you're absorbing it, but you may not be absorbing your calcium. A couple more things. So hang tight. I'll get you some more information when we come back from our break. Don't go away, Cheryl. Calcium absorption, you want to focus mostly on fats and in the digestive system, but there's a couple other things you could do. So hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We're back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're talking to Cheryl in New York about calcium absorption. Cheryl, are you there? Yes, I am, Ben. Okay, okay good. So we've got the fat part of the body, di- vitamin D, fat absorption part of the body, vitamin D, bile salts, uh, lecithin granules after meals, digestive enzymes. Uh, building bile using choline supplements, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, choline supplements, taurine supplements, glycine supplements as well can be helpful. Focusing on liver health, those, these are all very important strategies, calcium as well as selenium and zinc being absorbed by bile. Bile is a very underappreciated fluid and bile defects are always going to be linked to heart disease, for example, and also problems with calcium absorption. Then there's the intestinal element. Calcium is absorbed in the intestines. So if you have a history of intestinal issues, Crohn's yeah. disease, celiac disease, all of that, you're going to have impaired calcium absorption. So working on intestinal health, food diary, eliminating problem foods, and then also the biolumin nightly essence and probiotics and fermented foods can be very helpful for calcium absorption. Same with fiber. Uh, inulin fiber, as well as soluble and insoluble fiber from vegetables and uh, veggie juices and such. Then there is the importance of the kidneys when it comes to calcium absorption. We all know about kidney stones, calcium kidney stones. Uh, And if you have any issues with kidney disease, you're going to have a calcium issue. And many people have either kidney disease or subclinical kidney problems, which aren't bad enough to get you on dialysis or, or put you in an emergency room or in a doctor's office, but bad enough that you may have some calcium issues. And again, because vitamin D is turned on in the kidneys, this can be involved as well. So if you have blood sugar, the number one cause of kidney issues is blood sugar issues. So working on your blood sugar, that's the second step. 
And that means the sweeties from longevity, eliminating or reducing your intake of fast burning sugar foods that stress the blood sugar system, intermittent fasting and caloric restriction, as well as getting on the healthy star pack to get your basic nutrients for sugar metabolism. And then last but not least, hypoxia or low blood oxygen is also involved when the body, when we become toxic, our blood acidity or, or pH drops, the blood becomes acidic, calcium will leach out of cells in order to neutralize that acid. So you'll, uh, you 